So the one thing that really annoys me is Apple, as such a big organization as they are, taking the absolute out of us all when it comes to iCloud storage, primarily around when you're trying to do backups. So stuff like WhatsApp, Messenger, backup, various other stuff, um, when you do a restore, any updates, etc., is basically consuming that iCloud storage pretty much all the time. Obviously, if you decide to back up your phone that way, it's going to just basically hammer that storage amount and you're gonna end up spending more and more money, giving them more and more subscription fees and basically lining their pockets. But what if I told you there's a way to stop that? So, today we're gonna to talk about phone tool. And this guy looks extremely happy about it, and so am I, because to be honest, you can get this for absolutely nothing. And that's a tryout. Now I will say that he's caveated with a big, you'll be restricted, but at least you can go and try this out. Now, full disclosure, they did reach out to me and ask me to do this review. Um, they've not paid me for it. They've not asked me to say anything in particular about it. They won't get to see this video before it releases. The only thing they will do for me is to give me a pro key afterwards, which I'll cover off towards the end of this video, and basically to share this video on their media channels, which is great. Um, I really appreciate them reaching out and I really appreciate the ability to kind of go and review a tool like this. Now, I am an iPhone user. It's been something quite new to me. I moved over from Android last year. And to be honest, that was very painful. One of the things that I also find really annoying is how you're locked behind the massive paywall that is iCloud storage. It is an absolute ripoff. Apple have you by the short and curlies. So it's nice to see a product that is out there that you can have for free and try for free that can solve some of that challenge. So we'll cover off what there is when we open up the product, but basically I'm just gonna to go to the downloads. So it does work on Windows, iOS, and Android. Now, I, the idea of the Android would be to migrate. So obviously if you're migrating from an Android to an iOS phone, it can absolutely do that. Now the differences are, like I mentioned, there is a free edition and a pro edition. Primarily, it's going to be limited in the free edition to some of those elements. You can see what's cut off. Uh, how they describe fast and super fast, I don't know yet. We'll probably do a test and see how that works. The good thing is though, I mean, if you find this product works for you, I mean, look at that price. For a lifetime license, you know, having unlimited devices slash five PCs, I'm not sure how that works. I assume you can only install it on five PCs, but have unlimited phones. I'll ask them to clarify that. Um, but either way, the good thing is that's a pretty good deal, to be honest, especially if you can get a discount code. Now, I haven't got a discount code as yet, but if you do look in the link in the description, that will take you there and they'll know that you've come from my video. So please do that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get this downloaded and get it installed. So opening the tool, it started off with that wonderful thing of please connect your device. Now I'm going to use a standard USB-A to a lightning cable because I don't have the new iPhone with the nice USB-C, but let's get this connected. So phone tool, this is the application. You can see I am running the free version, so I've not uh, activated any license keys at the moment. I probably won't do that, to be honest, because I wanted to actually just give you a review of the free tool. And to be honest, I've done a couple of backups on this already, and I was quite shocked at how quick it actually was. Now, I won't lie, I did have some challenges early on with this app. Um, I don't think it was fully the app's fault. I think it was probably something to do with the cable and my iPhone. Um, I won't cut them out completely because I want to actually show you what I experienced, so I'll add those on in a moment. But this is kind of the the, um, the look and feel. Now, I assume what would happen if I had a key installed, this would probably disappear because they wouldn't want you to buy it now. Uh, you have the option to sign in with iCloud to add that connection in. I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'll do that when I've got my full clouded version. But you'll notice you can do stuff like manage stuff in your iCloud drive from here as well, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, my backups, you can see I've got two here. So this is the full one I ran earlier. Uh, it is a total of 13 gig, nearly 14. This did take about eight minutes to do all of that. Um, I will run off another one just so you can see how that works. And there's also a selective one as well. So this is a selective one where I literally just backed up contacts and some messages. So again, that was fairly seamless. 
So you can kind of then go see how a selective backup works. If I wanted to do a selective backup, I could back up my contacts and messages like I did earlier. Uh, photos, music, and videos. Now, obviously, if I did back up my photos and music, it's going to be considerably more. If I wanted to go back and do a full backup, that option is there. Uh, phone transfer. So if I basically wanted to transfer my phone to the PC, we can do that and we'll have a look at how that works in a moment. And WhatsApp manager, I believe is only for the paid version. So I can back up WhatsApp, which I think is quite a decent feature because I know one of the biggest challenges that I always see with my iCloud storage is if I turn back up on for WhatsApp, what generally happens is that, that will instantly kill all of the space that I have in my iCloud storage. And I've got quite a lot. So that in itself is going to be a feature worth me buying the full version for or utilizing that key. So let's have a look at the phone transfer. So let's do get started on this. Now what that enables me to do is I believe it's just select some files. So if I wanted to grab some photos, for example, I can just go in and grab them. So it's a nice little way of actually transferring phones and pictures over, which is quite useful. So that's really simple, and I imagine that'll be fairly quick. So it kind of takes away of using um, Windows Explorer out of the equation and just transferring that way. However, what I really wanted to cover off, um, we'll have a look at what the toolbox is. So this will basically do duplicate, and again, I think this is a paid part of it. What it can do is take away data that's replicated, so you've got two of the same picture or two of the same files. It can go in and basically remove them to kind of free up space. You've got options to batch convert uh, format photos to other formats, so really simple, and a data erasing tool, which will help you um, choose whether to erase certain data. But again, it's a paid option, so I'm not covering that today. Anyway, my backups, let's go and do one. So quite straightforward, let's go and do a full phone backup. We'll do get started. Uh, you'll see I've selected full version. Uh, I can add back on backup encryption. Uh, then I can verify and add a password. So let's just make it rubbish for now because it doesn't really matter, but enables me to actually encrypt that backup. Now it will ask me to uh, put the code in my phone. So it's just basically a case of entering your iPhone password and then I should be able to start the backup. And it may ask me again because I probably pulled it at the time. Again, like I said, this cable link isn't perfect. And as you can see, it will pretty much now start off the backup. It takes a few seconds to register and a little bit of time to kick in. But once it kicks in, this absolutely flies. I was quite amazed how fast this free version was. Now I've not seen any limits on the amount of backups you can do. Where the backups rely are, or the kind of um, caveats are, is supposedly around the speed of this transfer, which at the moment it probably doesn't look that quick, and that kind of phone transfer bit where you can only transfer 30, up to 30 files a day. So that works both ways. But as you can see, it's going to start running through some of those. And you can see the speed that that's running at. Now, I will pretty much stop the video here and I'll real start, but you can see at the moment, the time is 0032. So, so just coming back for a brief bit, we're now at uh, 36 minute past midnight. I think we started at 32, so we're about four minutes in, or close up to five minutes in. And we're at about 65% at the moment. So it kind of shows how fast this is rattling through this phone. Now I happen to know this is around 13 gig roughly. So, okay, it's not a massive amount, but obviously it's got to back up the data and it's encrypting it, which is the important part. So we're coming towards the end of that backup phase. And to be honest, we now just hit that eight minute mark. So considering this time I've asked for it to be encrypted, it's not made an awful lot of difference, um, which is interesting. Whether it's just encrypted with a password, but you'll notice there was a little bit more data this time. So maybe that's just with that encryption data there. So we can view the backups. Uh, if we go into my backups, you'll now be able to see I've got a total of 27. You do have the ability to restore. I'm not going to do that because let's be honest, I've not broke my phone, so I don't want to do that. But you can see the difference between the two. So this one here earlier wasn't encrypted and was 13 point six one gig 
The other one was 14. Now, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't all plain sailing when it comes to this app. Now, I will say, I don't think it's all the app's fault. i be honest, I get really annoyed with lightning cables being very overly temperamental, so that may be what I was experiencing. But I wanted to add this in just in case you experience this, because Persevere, I don't think it's the app's fault. I think, unfortunately, it's just sometimes related to the fact that lightning cables again, are just a pain in the backside. And what I'm half expecting is there will be some elements around potentially it wanting me to unlock. Uh, it's asking me to please trust this computer on this device and try again. So let's, uh, let's see what we need to do there. So I did eventually get a prompt to trust it, but it hasn't updated. So let me just unplug and replug and see what happens. I need to say it, but it's not actually locked. Oh, there we are. So eventually it has woken up. Took a while, took a while, but we're there. So. We could go data exploring, which we, we're not going to do. It doesn't tell me my capacity in use space or free space, which is a little bit concerning. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but I could absolutely do a backup. So let's let's try that. Oh dear. Oh no, 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 no! So what did I think of phone tool? Well, Apart from the annoyances I had, which, like I said, I think are massively related to the cable I was having and my phone not communicating properly with my PC, on the whole, it was really good. And, and actually, I was quite shocked at how fast it done backups. It did them fairly seamlessly, to be honest. The file transfer side is a little bit gimmicky because realistically, all you're backing up is pictures and music and stuff like that and you could do that with file explorer but i suppose if you're not a pro user and you're using something like that it, it's quite a nice easy tool to do and use that way and it's probably a nice easy way to move your images about etc it's probably a very good way to get your pictures off actually um, when you think about it if you want to kind of get them out of iCloud. The fact that you can actually link it to iCloud as well I think was quite useful so that you could actually pull the stuff out of there and, and drop it onto your machine locally. That's a really really good idea. Um, like I said I was reviewing the free version. I will be sent a pro key so I will probably add something into the comments later on to let you know how I got on. Um, but on the whole, yeah, really, really nice product, to be honest. Um, I think for the price point, it's probably about right, especially if you're looking at that lifetime license. That's probably where you're looking at. Um, it's always a little bit concerning when people offer lifetime licenses, I suppose, because, you know, you always wonder, are they going to be around for a while? As these are backed by a, a rather large um, company in the background, if you want to go do your digging, you can find out who they are. To be honest, I don't think these are going to be going anywhere, so your money's probably fairly safe dropping it in there. I suppose the only thing that could come and ruin the day would be Apple locking this down at some point, so you just probably have to make your own judgment there. But overall, a fairly decent product, to be honest, especially around that kind of price point. Um, especially going for the lifetime membership but then you can use it for absolutely free so for just doing backups and the restores there's no real need to actually buy it so you know try it use it for a while before you decide to make that plunge anyway if you have liked what you've seen today please as usual hit the like and subscribe and that bell and as always i'll see you next time